The young and old arrive in Zaporizhia after fleeing the besieged city of Mariupol. These evacuees weren't holed up in the Azov-style steel plant, but they have horror stories of their own. All markets are destroyed, all shops destroyed, all drugstores destroyed. No medicine, no food, nothing. And the children, I hope you never have to suffer like this, never again. These civilians got out of the city using their own means, many traveling in damaged cars. They were part of the first large-scale evacuation from Mariupol, which saw more than 100 civilians who had been hiding in the Azov-style steelworks leave the plant during the weekend. The UN and Red Cross-led convoy was expected to arrive in Zaporizhia on Monday, but authorities are still waiting. It is not clear what is causing the delay. Ukraine's foreign minister says the situation remains complicated. So far, I can commend uh, tireless efforts of the United Nations and the International Committee of the Red Cross for making it happen. But everything is very fragile. Things can fall apart at any given moment. So it's better to wait until vacation is over. The end of the evacuation doesn't seem to be anywhere in sight. Hundreds of civilians still remain trapped inside with nearly 500 wounded soldiers and numerous bodies. The plant, which is the last stronghold of resistance in Mariupol, was targeted by Russian shelling once again Monday. Kyiv says the brief ceasefire over the weekend quickly came to an end as soon as evacuees left the Azov-style steelworks. Some of those who fled have been taken to a village controlled by Moscow. Russia says the evacuees have the choice to stay or leave for Ukrainian-held territory.